All right, everybody, this is Sheets. And as promised, I want to do a follow-up video uh, given the addition of the uh, Stolyarenko um, the uh, Stolyarenko uh, Chandler fight. So I, I did feel as though that adding an 8K 8200 fight could change the outlook of the slate. And to some degree, I think that is accurate. I also wanted to update you on my, my final thoughts, given the ownership projections, which kind of came in. And to be perfectly honest with you, it's, it's, it's a little confusing to me. And I'm just going to kind of go with, uh, with what I feel um, as far as my final recommendations on the slate. Um, when I say that, this is kind of a, a thing with, with content and absorbing content, especially on a sport that takes like a week to absorb. In other words, when MMA goes off like once a week, you get like initial takes Monday and you think about them Tuesday, content comes out Wednesday, Thursday, you get everybody's opinion and all this stuff. And by the time the fights come around, sometimes, you know, you, you, you sway off of your original thoughts and your original theses and things like that. Um, and it happens in, in, in other sports too, but, like in basketball, for example, you know, you don't, you don't have that long to come up with your takes, you know, you don't have enough time to stew over them and get all these different bits of input and things like that. Um, football, you do have the whole, kind of whole week to, to kind of get there um, as well. So it's very similar to MMA in that respect. Um, and, and sometimes, I would actually say most of the time, the, the information you get during the course of the week does actually help you and it refines your, your, your thought process and you, your, the changes you make, you know, throughout the week are, are kind of are good changes to make because you really, the more information you have, the better. And that's just kind of logical, but sometimes you get taken off of a play and taken off of an idea. Um, that's for whatever reason, just it made sense to you the whole week. And all of a sudden you, you just kind of, it doesn't make sense anymore. Um, and usually in those situations, it, it's probably a good idea to try to, uh, I don't know, uh, keep out the, uh, the <laughs> keep out the noise. Um, and that's part of part of all of speculation. You know, when you're dealing with stock market stuff, DFS stuff is is know when to 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 you know block out the noise and when to allow it in. You know, and that's part of life in general. You know, and, and having conversations with people, know when to block out the noise and when to let it in. And, didn't mean to get all philosophical about it, but it is kind of an important skill to, 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 to hone and develop and to understand over the years. Uh, in any case, I, I want to go over this slate kind of again, um, given what I just, you know, given everything that I just said. And most of my takes are kind of the same, but the way I'm implementing them is going to be a little bit different. So first of all, I, I still believe that the Costa Giannetti fight or Kennedy fight is, is, is an important fight to target. I mean, both of these fighters have, have good, uh, good finishing crops. It, it's, it's a, it's a fight that really does rate to finish inside the distance. And I think getting to both of these fighters is pretty, uh, it's pretty good. Um, comparing Costa to some of these other nine, 9,200 and up fighters, I think Costa kind of stands out. And yet at the same time, I, I feel as though Kennedy um, as opposed to some of these other 92, you know, 9K opponents does have that kind of finishing upside that if he does in fact win, it's going to be because he gets a score that's really, really strong. So I think he's a very, very strong underdog here. Now let, let's talk about the Stoli Renko Chandler fight. I think it is a really, I think it's a fight you want to play. Um, I think that, that either fighter, if they win this fight is going to score well enough to be in the optimal. Stoli Renko has all kinds of finishing upside with all of her arm bars. And Chandler is is kind of a kind of wrestler, you know, kind of a, a puts pressure on, a lot of control time and things like that. She has some power also, and I think that these prices, I, I think it's hard to ignore um, this fight. I, I'm kind of I made a couple of builds where I basically locked in this fight um, and two others, which we'll talk about. I don't know if that's the way I'm actually going to go, but I think this fight's really, I think that's the fight you really want to play. I still don't have the uh, any interest in this Lynn's Grisham fight. I try to talk myself into Lynn's just because of the, I guess, more recency bias than anything. You know, he did a four takedown in the last fight, and he's seventy seven hundred. If he gets four takedowns today, he's going to win. But I think that's I think that's kind of short sighted. I mean, to say the least. So for me, this fight is still going to be a pass. 
the, the Jocko Allen fight, um, I, I still think that Allen is a very, very strong underdog. He has a, a good inside the distance prop um, at 7,900. Um, and I, I, I still hold that thought. So I believe that Allen is still a very strong play. And I also still believe that Jocko is sort of a fade. I try to talk myself into Jocko, actually, um, more because I, I was getting the impression that Allen was going to be hugely popular. And so if you could somehow get lucky and get a Jocko finish, you're, you're going to be well ahead of the field. But I just don't think that Allen is going to be as popular as I thought he was going to be. So um, I don't think that Jocko carries that same amount of leverage. I've, I've, I have a, I have a better leverage type play than I think Jocko um, uh, than, uh, than, than Jocko is. We'll get to that in, in a second. Um, hold on a minute. So the Silva Bronson fight, uh, I'm kind of coming around to both sides of this. I had it just the Silva side before, but from everything that I've heard, I mean, I do think this fight is a very strong fight to finish inside the distance um, either way. So I'm, I'm more inclined to just lock this one in um, again in certain builds. Like there was, again, I, I, there was one build which is what I did. I, I locked in the Stolyarenko Chandler fight. I went 50, 50. And then I also did 50, 50 silver Bronson just thought this was going to finish inside the distance. And yes, as a matter of fact, people might ask, well, why don't you just bet it inside the distance if that's what you can do? And yeah, I might do that also. Um, but I think that's what, where I'm at with this fight. So that's where I'm a little bit different. I think, mean, I, I kind of downplayed the bronze, the Ronson side in the first video. So I have come around to his side as well. Just basically turning this into a 50, 50 fight that you kind of want to get. Okay. So Tabitha Ritchie against Jessica Penny. So this was, this was my thought going into this week. I mean, Tabitha Ritchie was, was the easiest play on the board. Um, she was 8,900. She's, she's a two to one, two to one favorite to win. So she's priced fairly from a money line perspective. And the thing is, is that she's, she's, a, she's all of her upside is in her grappling, you know, and she, she's had three fights, Firo, she, you know, she, Firo's a monster and she was competitive enough in that for a while. And then in her last two fights, she got five takedowns and, you know, and, and that's the route she took to win. Um, she scored a hundred, she scored 90, um, you know, she didn't like have a lot of ground and pound and didn't have a finish or anything like that. And yeah, you kind of want a little bit more if you're going to get five takedowns, but 190 is cer certainly reasonable. And, and she's two to one. I just kind of figured she would be the huge chalk <laughs> at, at the beginning of the week. Um, and I was really worried about that. I was saying, okay, so how am I going to get off Richie? How much do I, and I was looking for reasons to fade her. Um, I mean, she's, she's against also Penne, who's not the greatest striker in the world. If anything, Penny would, wouldn't mind a grappling match. And so, you have a situation where one, where both, where, where you're, the one that you're worried about with Ricci is that she doesn't get the fight she wants. I think she's going to get the fight she wants. So I don't know. For me, it's just, I don't, I don't understand what's going on with the ownership. You want to know the truth. I mean, every ownership uh, projection system I look at has her like 15% or something like that. I, I, I literally don't get it. Um, and, and so aside from me, just talking myself off of this for some reason, I'm just going to plow, plow into this play. I, I just, I literally don't get it. I don't know why, any, why, why everybody's not locking this in. I don't know why this is not the main discussion of, of whether you're supposed to fade this one or not. Um, I, I will just say that the ownership should be higher. This is exactly what you want in a, in a, not exactly. And look, I'd rather have it inside the distance prop. It's a little bit better. I mean, but I mean, what else do you want? You have a younger fighter against an older fighter. You have a pure wrestling uh, upside win condition. And the other fighter is probably going to let you do what you want. I don't know. Uh, so for me, uh, if you're playing one lineup, you're playing Richie. If you're playing 10 lineups, you're playing Richie and all of them. And if you're playing 20 lineups, maybe you play her in only 15 or 16. I don't know. But for me, this is literally the easiest play. Ever. But I don't know. We'll see, I guess. Um I still believe this Latifi Olenek fight is is one that you need to target. I mean, you have you have just you know older heavyweights who just don't really I don't think even them really want to fight for five three rounds. I think this finishes either in the first or second round, and at these prices, I mean, that's something you kind of want. I think Olenek, I mean, I think his entire win condition is in a submission. 
Um, so you would say, well, why don't you just bet him by a submission? Though I, I might, I just might do that. Um, but another good way to bet Olenny by submission is, you know what, is to play him in DFS. So I think this fight is, is a really, really important fight that you want to you know, put in your lineups as well. Um, I guess that's why the Richie play maybe and people aren't playing it because you could get, you know, more finishing upside with guys cheaper like Latifi or and we'll get to Mike Davis in a second. But I don't know. We'll see. I maybe maybe I won't go as heavy on Richie yet. Maybe I'll talk myself off it again, but I, I, I doubt it. Um, so Mike Davis against Borshev. So here, this you want you want a leverage spot if you have it in you. This is this is the one, right? Um, so Mike Davis is going to, I believe, is going to end up really really popular. Okay. Um, the reason why is he has good win odds, um, and there's a clear path to victory. In other words, so let's look at this. In Borshev's last fight, he got taken down. What well, doesn't say, but he got taken down like seven times, at least, by Diakis. And then he got taken down a bunch of times. And then he got taken down also by um, by uh, by Dakota Bush. But the Diakis fight, he got taken down so much. And so this is this is the deal. They're like, okay, his takedown defense is poor. If we have someone that could take him down, this is what we want to do. And Mike Davis, you know, first of all, he hasn't fought in in a while. But you look, and he's got three takedowns here and two takedowns here. So okay, easy game, right? You just take Mike Davis, and and that's that's the end of it, you know. And and it's it's everything you want. It's eighty six hundred. You know, the price is good. Takedown upside. Even he had a lot of significant strikes too. He's got one hundred thirty four on the, on the on the board here. I mean, how how do you not play this? Um, so for me, this is the, this is the ultimate, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, it, uh, recency bias fade, you know, uh, uh, Borchev, he's a striking coach. So he is a pure striker. Um, and you know, if he in fact can stuff these takedowns and, and keep this on the feet, I mean, he could get a KO here, you know, and, and at 7,600, he's going to be. Not only is he going to be low owned, but he's going to be significant leverage over what I think is going to be a really high on Mike Davis. Now, make no mistake, Mike Davis is a really, really strong play. Okay, so if you're playing multiple lineups, you definitely want to play some Mike, you know, play Mike Davis. But you want to talk about a leverage spot? I really think that this is it. You know, now again, this could go a couple of ways. So I talked about how you know Borshev he's worse on his, his takedown defense. One thing that I've heard, he says he has a decent kind of get-up game that he's been working on. So that can work two ways. Uh, number one, if Mike Davis does elect to go to this take-time round, and again, that's not guaranteed. You know, Mike Davis is a, a pure boxer at heart, but he's happened to have, you know, he happened to go for takedowns over the last couple of fights. It's possible that Mike Davis, you know, and we've seen this so many times, where people have, they you know that their path to victory is going for takedowns, and they just don't. You know, we've, we've seen that so much um, that no one's really allowed to be surprised if this turns into a striking match. However, if he does go for takedowns and then Borshev does get up again, then it might just lead to more takedowns for Mike Davis. So what I'm saying is that this fight is not just Mike Davis or nothing. Like this fight is a fight that you want to target and you want to get some of the Borshev. Trust me on this one. OK, if he gets this done and it, again, he, he can get. A KO, um, you know, is 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 what you call it. His uh, inside this is probably not great. So great, so that'll that'll keep people off him. He'll be twelve percent owned or something like that at seventy six hundred. And if he gets there, um, in in a if he gets that KO, I mean, you are the nuts because you're fading a very very popular fighter. So that's one big revelation. I guess I sort of have is if especially we're playing multiple lineups. I mean, it's going to take a, a a bunch to really get you know a good piece of him, but. I think Borshev is kind of a very legit leverage spot off of Mike Davis, who you also want to play. Um, here's another fight which I kind of changed my mind on, the Castaneda-Santos fight. I was originally into into Santos as kind of a, a live dog at 7,400. But the more I look into it, I, I actually think that Castaneda um, is, is, is actually a very, very strong GPP play. I mean, I think he's got a nice combination of win odds and some grappling upside. I actually almost think that he is as a good a play as good a play as um as what's his name as what's her name as um as Ricci. The reason why is honestly I've kind of fell victim to this. There's been quite a bit of 
of fighter speak where the, uh, coming out of this training camp, um, from what I hear, Castaneda is going to be going for grappling. And I just don't find it, find it hard to believe that they would say that for no reason. You know, it's not like, it's not like he's a big underdog and he needs to confuse the opponent. You know what I mean? Like, I think he's really, that's, I think that is what he's going to do. And, and he throw, you throw the, the, the grappling upside into a good win, win odds uh, situation. I think he's, he's really safe. I think that he's, um, uh, I think that he is, uh, has more upside than I originally had thought. And I think that, that also the fact that he's going to be, you know, going for some grappling, maybe it reduces Santos's win condition a little bit, you know, because Santos, we were playing, we were th thinking about playing him in part because he has a good inside the distance prop, but I, I don't think he's, he can, he's going to be able to have a great inside the distance uh, chance if Castaneda is coming at him with a lot of wrestling, a lot of grappling, if that's in fact the case. So that's my one upgrade. Another big upgrade from my original video is, is Castaneda more, much more than I thought. Um, as far as Yusuf Shane is, I'm still into this one. Uh, I, Again, I it's 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 probably dumb, but hey, wouldn't be the first dumb thing I ever did. Is that I, I like um I do like the Shana side. Um, he's he's if if for, maybe if I don't like him to win, I, I'd like him at the very least to to make use of work such that the ninety five hundred price tag doesn't pay off, which is which is to me important enough, you know. And and the thing is, is that I was actually expecting Shana to get like a lot of. Uh, a lot of uh, you know 6700 love because you know what he's he's a wrestler you know but what happens is is that you know he's, he's a 10 to 1 underdog so you, you plug him in the projection systems and you put his low win odds and he's just not going to show up anywhere which means he's going to end up being really really low owned i mean i i if i told you that i'm giving you a wrestler at, at you know pure wrestler whose entire win condition is is based on wrestling or whatever it is and you have a guy yusuf who's kind of fishy in a way I mean, wouldn't you want to play him at least a little bit? So I, I'm, I'm definitely going to get to him, and uh, we'll see. Who knows? You get that get that variation where maybe he loses, but he got a couple of takedowns and maybe scores forty points. Who knows? Um, but I'm 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 still taking a shot on the terrible play of the Don Shanis, and I'm almost certainly not going to get any of the Yusuf. But here's what I will say: that if I'm going to get Yusuf, it's going to be with Borshev. You know what I mean? Like all these like bad plays, you know, like that I have to think thinking about they're over nine K and I don't want to play any of them. Instead of not playing none of them, I'll play them, but I'll only play them with somebody like Borsha. And I think that makes a, a decent amount of sense. Uh, another guy who I've got another fight, which I've kind of changed my mind on is the Barcelos Jones fight. I am giving Barcelos more of an upgrade um, than I, I originally a, a, a thought. I, I, again, it's because of, because of more fight, I keep fight tape and and and, and fundamental analysis. Uh, I, I I didn't give Barcelos as much grappling upside in the original take as I think I should have. So with the new Barcelos kind of like take that I have, that it's probably gonna, he has more grappling upside than I thought. I think that um, again, it's going to keep Jones's kind of you know flyer KO win condition kind of at bay, and it's going to increase Barcelos's upside in his wins so i'm gonna go more on barcelos and, and much less on jones than i had originally uh originally scheduled um randy brown against trinaldo um i don't quite have it in me to go to the trinaldo side um i still think that the rent so here's the thing um the, the randy brown side i still think that fundamentally it's kind of a poor play because it's 9300 and his inside the distance prop is poor but you don't really get these ninety three hundred dollar young versus old fighters at low ownership all that often, you know. Um, and from what I'm seeing, his ownership is going to be in the teens. And 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 again, that's good enough for me to get to him. But again, um, I think almost all of my Randy Brown exposure is going to be either compared with Borshev or with even with. Uh, with Shanus, okay? And I think it's a really important uh, line of construction uh, discussion. And, and, and similarly, in, in the main event, I, 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 the same thing. So I went through in my first video why I thought Durham was kind of a fringe, fringy, just fishy play. But it was more based on the fact that, you know, listen, he, she's minus 110 to get a submission, pretty much. So 50% of the time she gets a submission, 
But of those times she gets a submission, how many times of those are even optimal? You know, if she gets a submission in the fifth round, what does that do for you? You know, if she gets one in the fourth round, what does that do for you? Obviously, if you get in the first round, that's great. Um, so I think when you when you average all that out, I think she becomes like not a great play. I mean, not an awful play, but just kind of an okay play. So again, I think what I'm going to do is something similar with 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 the Mackenzie Dern. I'm going to play her, you know, more than I would have otherwise. But it's probably going to be paired more with the Voroshev and 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 the Chainis, you know. Um, uh, so yeah, I think I think those are going to be the that's going to be the uh, the idea. Now again, you might have think, well, why did I mention Kennedy in these like you know underdog pools to put with the with the uh, with the uh, whatever is with the uh, with these kind of fishy nine Ks? I think that Kennedy is going to be more popular even than Voroshev. Um, and I think that Kennedy is certainly going to be more popular than um, than Chainis. Yeah, he's got a better winning chance. But, you know, listen, everybody sees what I see. And the Kennedy's win, you know, win condition is pretty well, you know, dedicated to scoring well. So I think he's going to get a little more love than those than those guys. But, yes, I will I will put Kennedy in some of those aforementioned builds as well with the bad 9Ks. Um and that's kind of the that's kind of my retake on all of this stuff. So again, just to summarize, I would give upgrades. First of all, I would reiterate my my take on on um, on Ricci as a strong play. I would upgrade my play on Castaneda. I would upgrade my play on Barcelos. I would add the Stolyarenko Chandler fight to your kind of mix, um, and I would reiterate my my. My love for the Latifi Olenek fight is kind of a, again like a both sides. I upgraded Bronson a little bit so that you could play both those both those fighters, and then I added. Look, Mike Davis remains a good play, but I added Borshev to like the pool as a pretty pretty strong leverage play. And as far as guys that got downgraded, yeah, I'm really not going to play Trinaldo. I'm not going to really get. I don't think I'm going to get to the to ya to Tian Jonan. Uh, maybe a small amount, but she's going to be popular at that price. So I think when in, in those types of builds, maybe those builds, I end up with more. I don't know. I don't even know who I would play her with, you know, like a popular underdog on this slate doesn't really fit like too many of my builds, you know? So I don't know where she's going to kind of get in there. Um, and again, more Dern than I get let on, but again, only with those the aforementioned uh, kind of cheapos. Um, and that'll do it. Uh, I, I think that, you know, you can make some good builds out of the information I've given you. It's an early start at 4 p.m. Uh, and good luck.